Hey, what's up good people? Good morning, good evening from where you're watching this podcast. My name is Nick Kanali and welcome to this Tech Trends podcast. So, if you are frequent user of ride hailing apps, there's an 80% chance you've used Bolt, right? Request for a ride from one place to another. And I think that's why I find this podcast quite interesting because I'm having a very interesting guest talk about what they're doing around this space, right? And, uh, you know, of course, I'll have to discuss about what they've been doing, their plans for this market, of course, a lot of things around regulations, basically an entire conversation around riding hailing apps, specifically with Bolt. And welcome, Linda. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Right, Thanks um, for having me. Good. So I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Tell us what you do at Bolt and basically every other thing we need to know about you. Sure. Um, so Linda is my name, Linda Ndongo. I am the country manager at Bolt mm -hmm. in Kenya, uh, which basically means that I oversee the ride hailing operations mm -hmm. in this side of the world. And yeah, that's about me from the professional side. Outside of work, I am a wife, I am a mom, I have three kids. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's how it summarize me. I've actually interacted with a lot of your team members. Yes. How does it feel like leading this interesting team at Bolt here in Kenya? Oh, it's really great. <laughs> I, I must say the team at Bolt is quite mm -hmm. uh, dynamic. We have a good proportion of young people and also a bit older people. It's a good mix. Mm -hmm. But what I really love most about the team and the ways of work and the culture here is that while we're no longer a startup, we have maintained all the good elements of yeah. a startup, mm -hmm. if I can call it that. We move fast, we're agile, we learn fast, and we try and we adjust very quickly. And I, that's just great at both. And, and I think that the best thing is that a great idea can come from anywhere, mm -hmm. and that's embodied across mm -hmm. the entire organization. Mm -hmm. So we're always coming up with new things and innovations. All right, interesting. Yeah. You know, if, um, you know, for some of us uh, who grew up when we were still using the traditional taxis. Mm -hmm. You look at what is happening right now in this space and there's a lot of interesting things to see. Yeah. You know, with just a single app, you can request for a ride, get from one place to another. Yes. And from old and from where you're sitting, you've been in Kenya for how many years now? About seven. About seven years. So that's quite an interesting, you know, number of years. Tell us about this journey. How has it been like for Bolt in Kenya? Uh, Bolt has had a very interesting journey. So when Bolt came into the country, we came in as Taxify. I remember Taxify, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and mm -hmm. over time we rebranded. So now we've been five years as Bolt. Mm -hmm. And um, we've learned a lot. We've grown a lot. I would say back then I wasn't there, but from what I know yeah. about back then, we were we had very good elements. Of course, we mm -hmm. were very ambitious. We wanted to do good and do well at the same time. We still keep some of those, and over time we've added more things to it. Right. So we've learned a lot from what others are doing. Mm -hmm. We've expanded and started thinking more about the future in mm -hmm. addition to now. Because you know when you're small and you're a startup you're looking at here and now yeah how do i build myself how do i make sure that in every market i'm in i'm actually you know doing something good mm -hmm. i am growing the business i'm being impactful mm -hmm. and now you know we're, we're, we're at a place of if i can call it privilege yeah. where we can look at okay we're good for today mm -hmm. what can we do better tomorrow yeah so i think that's what the evolution has been we've grown and we are looking more and more into the future, mm. even even as we sustain now. Right, interesting. You know, I think most people just know Bolt as a ride hailing app, right? Yes. I uh, will talk to someone, like I'll talk to my mom, and I'll be, okay, let me request for your Bolt. I'll be, ah, taxi, yeah. But I think there are so many other things you do other than just ride hailing. Yes. Tell us about that. Yes, <laughs> yes. In fact, our, our thing is mobility. Yeah. So it's not just ride hailing. And it's true, for example, in Kenya, the biggest line of business is ride hailing, mm -hmm. the taxi side, which is cars and borders and tuk-tuks. But we also do food. We have food delivery yeah. services. Mm -hmm. We have in other markets, we have micro-mobility. Yeah. This is uh, scooters. Mm -hmm. We have self-driving cars where yeah. you just go in and you take your ve the vehicle, move to where you need to go to, and then, you know, pack it. We even have, um, you know, delivery. So for groceries and these kind of things. And the thing for us is we want anywhere where there is a mobility, need mm -hmm. we want to be in that space mm -hmm. and we want to decongest cities yeah. more broadly mm -hmm. because we realize that any kind of solution that encourages sharing yeah. then is better for the people in the cities that they are in mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. like our broader vision that drives us and guides us into which spaces we want to get into so how do you really intend to achieve this uh, this vision uh, because I know you're in 
um, how many times in uh, how many towns in Nairobi right now? How many cities in Kenya? I mean, we're in eight cities. Eight cities, yeah. Yes, although we're the biggest in Nairobi and Mombasa I mean, mainly, Mombasa. so we need to expand more in the cities in the other cities. All right. So we just talked to us about this vision and this expansion plans to these other markets. How, you know, which cities are we looking at? You know, um, why is this so important for you to actually expand to these new cities? Right. Yeah. So when I think about Kenya. I, I look at where we're at as a country and I look at what we're trying to achieve, everything that the government has set out in place. Mm-hmm. And one of the things, the big places that I see that Ride Hailing and Ride Hailing partners like both can plug into is employment. Yeah. Because we do have a sizable number of young people and Ride Hailing has lower barriers of entry mm-hmm. if you compare it with other lines of business. Yeah. And so for me, when I think about both and I think about what we can do in this country, I see that if we do it right, mm-hmm. we can actually create viable employment opportunities yeah. for so many of our young people, mm-hmm. which then will help to relieve some of the pressure economically that our young people have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And by this, I don't just mean you know, being a driver because you can build yourself up. You can start as Linda. I can uh, get a car from Nick who is sitting in the office Mm -hmm. and I make some money. And then over time I go and buy a car. Mm -hmm. And then over time I buy another car. I become a fleet owner. Mm -hmm. And now I have a small business. I have five, six cars. That's the kind of evolution we'd like to see happening with our driver partners. Mm -hmm. And I'm very passionate about this. That's why we want to take it beyond Nairobi, beyond Mombasa to all these other cities. Because if we do it right, Mm -hmm. collectively as an industry, I think we can have a really big impact. Right. I think I actually have so many friends who have an eight to five job, but in the evening they get back to their taxi and start their, you know, yes. to just make some extra money. Yes. Yeah. In fact, you know, like we were saying before we started the podcast, there's a general sentiment that you need to have yeah. seven revenue yeah. mm-hmm. income streams. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing you can do, right? If you're a young person or even an old person anyway, sitting in the office in the morning as you get to the office, mm-hmm. you know, you can get into the ride hill inside of things, yeah. offer services, make some money mm-hmm. in the evening as you're going home as well do the same then you already have two revenue streams right and they're not in conflict with yeah each exactly other. yeah yeah Linda, let's talk about you know your, um kenya's a market for you mm-hmm. um of course bolt has been here for like seven years uh you know um and um over the years you've seen a lot of new interesting developments we've seen you of course expand to new cities as you uh, you know as you mentioned earlier mm-hmm. uh, and of course you're looking to expand to more cities in the coming years mm-hmm. and i think the kenyan market is a very interesting market for you as a company mm-hmm. Um, and uh, specifically because, as you talked about creating employment, and uh, one thing I picked last year was about an investment you announced that you're going to make, you're going to be making in the Kenyan market. Yes. That was around hundred thousand, hundred million euros. Yes. To basically invest in Kenya and just support your drivers, and of course introduce new products that we spoke about earlier. You know, uh, before we started this pod- we started this podcast. Yes. Talk to us about this investment. Why is Kenya such a very important market for you? Um, so when we think about Kenya as bold we see massive opportunity, not just for the company, but like also I mentioned, it's good for the economy, it's good for the people of the country. And when we think about this 100 million that we want to bring into the country, it's going to go into various things, yeah. some of which you've already mentioned. Yeah. But the biggest one for me, again, the most exciting one is electric. Yeah. Um, we are, I, I, I've said this before, electric to me is a future when, yeah. when I think about transport. And so we're putting in a sizable amount of money into mm-hmm. electric vehicles. We're starting with two wheelers. Mm-hmm. Actually, we'll be making that announcement very soon oh, okay. because we're in the end stages of the partnership. We're going to be working with a few partners here in country to enable our driver partners to actually own electric bikes at a significantly lower cost mm-hmm. because we find that with electric, the biggest barrier aside from infrastructure is the cost of acquisition of the asset. Mm -hmm. And so if we can support our driver partners to actually acquire this asset Mm -hmm. at a lower cost, then it becomes cheaper because maintenance of an electric bike, for example, compared to a traditional bike Mm -hmm. is cheaper. So then the driver earns more Mm -hmm. and it's better for them. They can pay off the bike faster. And so then they can build this ecosystem that I was talking about Mm -hmm. where they they move from owning one asset to several and having many people in employment. So this is where a big chunk of that money is going to. Mm -hmm. And it's coming very soon. Oh, interesting. I I love anything about electric cars. And the good thing is you've seen even the government supporting this. Um, I think a a couple of months ago, Mm -hmm. I was in an career when the government was announcing... um, the, uh, the the thermal powered data center. Mm-hmm. 
I think they were talking about how they are calling they're going to put you know charging stations in every city from Naivasha all the way to Nairobi. So that's actually a very interesting um you know um way to look it. So of course we're looking forward to that announcement. Yeah. And we're going to be here to cover that as well. Yes. Um so still on that. Yes. Um you know uh something around regulations which of course has been very big mm-hmm. you know for bold and of course I love how you guys have been able to handle to handle that for you. Mm-hmm. How is compliance or how you have you wanted to make sure you adhere to these regulations that of course NTS has been talking about right. and of course just moving forward what more should we see uh bolt to special justice adhering to this you know compliance and regulations right i'll start by saying that i think that regulation is critical yeah. in any industry mm-hmm. right because as the industry grows and evolves and matures as mm-hmm. right helen is doing in this yeah. country mm-hmm. then there needs to be some guardrails and it is the government's responsibility to put those guardrails in place to ensure that the companies and the actors within that industry actually are being fair and equitable mm-hmm. so that 100% has bought we are behind the government on yeah. that and mm-hmm. we agree with now coming to where we are um in terms of the regulations and in terms of what's been happening in the country we do have a set of regulations that for the most part mm-hmm. is okay i would say that there are sections in that regulation yeah. that need refinement mm-hmm. adjustment mm-hmm. which is normal yeah. because when you go into a new industry and you craft regulations then over time as the industry evolves mm-hmm. then the players realize that there's need to adjust certain yeah. things and the beauty of where we are in the country is that there is that acknowledgement by all parties yeah. that some things could be tweaked mm-hmm. to be more efficient including the government yeah. and we are collectively working towards this mm-hmm. there's even a tax a task force in place yeah that includes the government that includes industry players like us mm-hmm. platform operators that includes driver partners mm-hmm. so that together we build a more cohesive regulation mm-hmm. and so for us as bolt yeah. we're very interested to keep playing in that space mm-hmm. to keep speaking with our driver partners to keep speaking with the government to ensure that we are building very robust regulations mm-hmm. and we also are committed to whatever is in place right now yeah. we adhere to it mm-hmm. because you know we live by the rule of the land yeah, exactly. that's very important and that's really very important again because coming in a, in a country where you know we are coming from the traditional taxis that were you know were there before where you would take a taxi yes. or a again with the driver you know yes. they only get to the airport and all these yes. so i think regulation played a very important role and it's it only makes sense of course for bold just adhere to that right yes. um and it and again boils back to just when you look at this regulation it boils back to just driver and rider safety yes. uh which of course has been um you know a very big debate you know across the country we've seen of course people talk about how does bolt ensure that i'm actually safe when i ride in a taxi yes. how even is the driver safe so it's not just about the safety of the driver yes. the rider as well yes. so what are you doing in that space oh a lot yeah. a lot <laughs> because I, I, as you rightly said safety is such a critical issue yeah. especially when in a sector like ours where there's a lot of movement with very many different people and people are people mm-hmm. right yeah. you could be a saint today and you're the devil tomorrow yeah. and so we are aware of this and every time when we're sitting and thinking you know in our kitchen and seeing what do we need to do next mm-hmm. we look at the 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 right experience from the beginning actually before the right starts yeah. what is it that we can do to make sure that there is safety embedded in it during the ride what can we do to ensure there's safety mm-hmm. embedded in it mm-hmm. after the ride should anything happen then how do we make sure that we track it and we manage it yeah. and so we have a whole host of features i could talk about it all day mm-hmm. but i can tell you some of the big things that we do is we're vetting drivers we're also vetting riders oh, because okay. oh, we realize that um Sometimes our driver partners really go through very difficult things mm-hmm. including even robberies yeah. from drive riders and so it has to be both ways mm-hmm. we vet and of course we hold our driver partners to a higher standard of yeah. care and customer service because at the end of the day it's their business and if you want someone to come back mm-hmm. for that repeat business then you have to go the extra mile mm-hmm. so we train them on what this looks like and how to make sure that they're safe that the riders are safe mm-hmm. and then during the trip we have a lot of features one of which i would call out is like our sos button yeah. where if anything happens if you feel unsafe if you have a security issue if you have an accident 
by pressing that button in three minutes, somebody gets back to you and they ask you, you know, what's the nature of your emergency? Do you need security? Do you need um, maybe ambulance services? Mm-hmm. And then um, the right kind of response is dispatched. Mm-hmm. And we have others, even like trip anomaly, for example. Yeah. So if I order a trip, say it's like nine or 10 p.m. and then for some reason, the vehicle is not moving, yeah. that triggers something in our system. Mm-hmm. And so somebody will respond to the driver and the rider in the trip asking them are you fine do you need support do you need help so many of these features like i told you i can talk about it all yeah. day because <laughs> we realize safety is at the core mm-hmm. of actually offering good service right. in this space oh, is there a point that you have been forced to actually suspend a driver or a rider or just not adhering to this uh, safety regulation unfortunately yes mm-hmm. Um, and it's um, it, I, it's really unfortunate, especially you know when I think more on the driver side because this is livelihood, mm-hmm. right? And we do the most and the best that we can to ensure that it doesn't get to that point yeah. where there's a suspension or a permanent, you know, being asked to exit from mm-hmm. the platform. Mm-hmm. But we do unfortunately get to those cases where you know people have to we have to part ways. Mm-hmm. And uh, we try and minimize as much as possible. But if it happens, then it happens. Right. Because I think I saw from a report last year, around 500 drivers were suspended. Thousand. Yeah. If I, yeah. Yeah. That's a very big number. Yeah. So it tells you how. But I love the fact that actually it's it's like um it's a two way traffic. Like you know, I'm gonna provide you the safety measures. It's up to the driver to actually obey them. You as the rider and driver to actually follow them. Yes. And, and I think you know, just still around the drivers. Um, there's me being a driver on your platform, yes. and there's you making him actually stay like incentivizing me and i think one thing i've seen you do that is that one way i've seen you do that is through the program the exhaustion program you launched the other week yes. uh which i actually found very interesting in fact we have an in-house podcast around that maybe i'm gonna get a quote from you on that yeah. just talking about that program because as people who cover these startups as well mm. we found that very interesting mm. what was the idea behind this program yes and it, it all goes back to some of the things i've been talking about we consider ourselves more than just a traditional taxi company mm. and we really the, our drivers are the heart of what we do yeah. without our driver partners and their families and their communities we would not be mm. in any of these markets that we serve and so one of the things that we want to do is to help drivers and their communities to empower themselves. And so the Accelerator program, as you probably know, is we are are calling for ideas. Mm -hmm. So for our driver partners or their family, community that have an idea, that is a solid business idea, we're asking them to submit applications. Mm -hmm. And when they do, and you know, if you get shortlisted, first of all, if you get shortlisted, um, you get into a training program. Mm -hmm. So we believe in training and mentorship Mm -hmm. because it's difficult to run a business if you don't have some of this. Yeah, yeah. And in the informal sector, we don't have as many opportunities to get training, to get mentorship mm-hmm. as we do maybe in white collar jobs, yeah. right? And so we are providing that to the first lot of people that are shortlisted. Mm-hmm. And then from that lot of people that are shortlisted, we will pick 10 winners. Mm-hmm. And these 10 winners will get seed capital yeah. for that idea. Mm-hmm. And the logic behind it is that we've taken you through training. We've helped you to refine yeah. your idea mm-hmm. during that training session. And then now we're giving you m- some money mm-hmm to kickstart mm-hmm. that journey mm-hmm. because then like you said you know more than one revenue stream yeah, ever hurts uh-huh. yes mm-hmm. yeah and how, how are your drivers reacting to this ah uh, they're excited yeah. in mm-hmm. fact we had a forum with them just the week before we officially launched and we told them about this and it was exciting because i mean i i also if i wasn't an employee at both <laughs> i would apply <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because i think it's a great thing mm-hmm. and and it's very with with the right backing and support mm-hmm. then one can actually build a solid business. And I think it's very fulfilling yeah. to actually build a business and see it grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I saw you're pumping around 200, is it 200 million euros? In the, uh, well, I can't remember the figure, but I think some good chunk of money to actually support these drivers. Yeah, which actually a very good in, yeah that's a driver. really, yeah, to support these drivers because as you said, uh, you know, um, it's about having a second source of revenue yes. and supporting their families. That's, yes. you know, um, quite, you know, a very interesting uh, way to look at it. So, yes. Let's talk about you know, as we wind up. Yes. Your vision for board. Of course, you've been um, board GM for how many years now? About two. About two. And of course, your vision for board. I'm sure there are so many things you're planning for this, uh, for board as a company. Mm. There's so many plans you have lined up for this, uh, you know, for the brand as well in the market. Mm. What should we expect from board in the coming years? Oh, so much. Yeah. So much. First, we want to 
continue to become a household name. Mm-hmm. I think we've come from very far. Yeah. Um, we've had very strong players in mm-hmm. this industry that mm-hmm. we've had to stand against. Yeah. And we're holding our own, so we're very proud of that. Mm-hmm. We want to expand, like we mentioned. We want to offer our services and give driver partners a chance to make some money through our platform mm-hmm. across the country. We want to diversify. And when I say diversify, we're di- diversifying in terms of the kind of vehicles that we have. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we're doing more motorbikes. Mm-hmm. We, you know, coming soon might be launching a smaller kind of vehicle. Oh, okay. And we also, you know, have want to have a bit more integration within the different verticals that we have. So right now, you know, we have food. Yeah. So we're working more closely together mm-hmm. in this kind of spaces. And basically we just want to go big. Mm-hmm. In this country so that then we can actually work hand in hand all of us in this country mm-hmm. to actually create a better economic space for all the people who are involved with us right. in the platform so more partnership with the drivers as well yes mm-hmm. of course and in fact actually now that you mentioned it we've been having a very increased levels of engagement we've mm-hmm. always been engaging with them but now more than ever mm-hmm. we want to be hand in hand with our driver partners right. yeah we want to understand them and see how best we can help them mm-hmm to build their businesses mm. through us and other ways. Yeah. I mean, that's interesting because uh, over the years, one of the things we ride with a driver, bold driver, they're still complaining how they're not engaging us. We don't even know where the office, but actually over the, c- the last couple of months, we've seen them being more, you know, like, okay, yeah, they're actually reaching out and doing all these things. So it's really very interesting to see you going that extra mile to actually engage the drivers of having these plans for them, which is good for both you the driver, and even the rider, you know, um, of your bold platform. Exactly. Yeah. It's a win-win. And, and truly, Um, the direction that we're taking is the more empowered and the more our drivers achieve, mm-hmm. the better it is for us. Yeah. It's, it, it's just, it's good business mm-hmm. and it works for everybody. So if we all can win, why not? All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Linda. Thank you for spending your time to, in this call, Nairobi meeting, to actually <laughs> have Beyonce with us on this podcast. We have to actually host you on another one to see how we can actually sit down and just talk about what Bolly is doing, their plans and everything they have lined up so as you heard from linda a lot of nice things coming up plans i love the electric electric bikes having ridden uh financially in one of myself and of course i look forward to that so thank you so much any closing remarks um be on the lookout for our big electric announcement it's mm-hmm. coming your way very yeah. soon right. and thank you so much for having me it's been a pleasure right. yeah thank you so much linda Excellent. And thank you so much everyone for watching. We hope to see you in the next episode. As I mentioned earlier, we have a very interesting episode coming up talking about the Bolt Accelerator program. That's going to be an in-house podcast. But of course, we're going to get a voice from Linda from just the first podcast we've shot. Uh, and of course, we're going to be look, uh, working that on next week uh, with Alan. So basically, look forward for that. Thank you so much for Linda. And I hope to see you in the next episode. All right. Thank Bye. you.